Hello friends, family and other creatures of the sea, welcome back to another high level best of five. Today in the top right, spawning as the Red Terran player playing for team GGG Starcraft 2. It is a dream. Of course, GGG good game gaming, if I recall correctly, and I'm pretty sure I do recall correctly. In the bottom left we have Solar playing for Kaisi Gaming, the Chinese team. And we see uh, oh, Solar with a pool first here. It's not too uncommon to see that happen against uh, Dream, honestly. Dream is one of these players that loves to proxy Rex on the other side of the map at the start of the game. Um, two Rex, three Rex, four Rex, he's done it all. This time though, he's opening up with a command center first. First building being another command center. It's gonna definitely boost his eco a little bit. And on top of that, this means that the command center will already be done before the Lynx hit the other side of the map. And as most likely you'll get your factory as a second building in the wall, this tends to be what we call a little bit of a blind counter in TVC. When the Terran opens up with a command center first and the Zerg opens up with a pool first, the Zerg either wants to deny some type of early proxy barracks play or they want to deal damage with their first four to six links across the map. Try and see if they can delay that command center a little bit, maybe if they can uh, even kill a marine on the low ground or something along those lines. Majority of the time though, if uh, it is a CC first opener, none of that will actually happen. We see the Reaper as the first unit here, and that factory is sure to follow on the side of Dream, who's already on two gases, and uh, we'll get gas rather quickly because of that. Orbital Command gets built as well, and Solar, like the wise man that he is, decided to run around. Now sees that the CC is already done. Honestly, I wouldn't even blame him if he pokes up with just a single ling and then runs away. I mean, he sees that the factory is building here. He'll try to attack it for a bit, but it's not going to work. Dream does need to be careful that he doesn't bounce these links over. I've seen this happen before. Okay, that, that ended up going quite all right. Um, SCV production starts from the low ground. I'm surprised that Solar is sacrificing all of his links. I think that is a little bit risky and it wasn't quite necessary either. We'll dream with some missed target fire there. We'll get four links for free. Might go hunting for the next two. Uh, he can't really move out yet as there's no Hellions on the map. There's no Marine at home and indeed Dream will start hunting for those links. Might just be capable of finding them. He can't leave his natural too open though. So he can chase all the way out. He's going to find these two links though. That's a really big find. I love this opener here for Dream. He's following it up with a three Rex. Oh, okay. Now this is something we don't see very often. A CC first into a triple Rex. And this is a single Hellion being produced right now. A couple of Marines on the way will be used to deny this scout. That makes some sense. Um, and I think all this Overlord will see, honestly, is just going to be that Starport. And, and that is not that suspicious of a timing for the Starport. If the Overlord doesn't see the barracks, that would be huge. Oh, it does. It barely spotted it. That's a really, really big scout here for Solar. That's going to allow him to get a Bailing Nest or a Roach Warren a lot faster. I'd love to see a Roach Warren here personally. And I know that, that in the past, whenever Solar has spotted something like this, he often opted for that Roach Warren. Quick third gas on the way. We should see a Tech Lab coming down on this factory um, relatively soon as well to try and get some tanks out. I, would, I can only imagine, right? Where's all this gas going to be going to otherwise? I... I don't quite know. Yeah, there we go. Tech Lab. Now, double medevac, of course, going to be the opener. There's going to be a crap ton of Marines. This is kind of like a 2-1-1, uh, a but with three barracks. So I guess you just call it a 3-1-1. One, one. Not sure why I didn't do that in the first place. It did open up with that, that factory after the barracks, though. So it's a little bit different than we'd usually see it. Um, it it's a fake into, uh, you know, a fake factory into a three racks. And I'm... I'm just curious to see how Solar is going to be dealing with this. He will get that Bailing Nest rather than the Roach Warren. Often against two Basal Lins, which this kind of smells like a two Basal Lin on a dream. The Roaches are just a bit better. They're more consistent. They allow you for some good counter aggression as well. You can get a very high drone count while still being safe. While with Ling Bane, because Lings are so larva intensive, um, you often need to... Uh, cut workers a bit earlier, earlier, not because you can't afford the links, but because you simply do not have the larva. Uh, you tend to rely on high queen numbers and high ling numbers and a lower drone count, which makes every defense a little bit tighter than it necessarily needs to be. Now, there's no tanks yet in this bad boy. Second tank 
and the first the first tank already out, second tank on the way. So you have a single medevac being produced right now. I wonder what he's going to be picking up with this medevac. Will he opt for the double tank or will he get one tank and four marines? I'd imagine it's going to be a double tank lift, but let's uh, take a look at the front there. As Solar does not actually have anything. He doesn't have any Banes ready right now. Scan comes in, sees the fact that there's no Bane links ready and Dream's just going to keep... Keep moving forward. Targets down two Bane Links. Oh, there's still three Bane Links morphing. If they finish, that would be big. More target fire off these Marines. All Bane Links go down before they get the fight. Without Combat Shield, these Marines are a little bit weaker than they ideally would be. Reaper Grenade actually dealing some damage and denying, negating some of the damage output of the Queens. One more Queen will get sniped. And this was a very, very good trade here for Dream. Did lose a lot of Marines and uh, lost a bit of firepower because of that. But... At the same time, clearing six queens, only a single queen remaining. Um, there is enough larva for now, it seems like. And of course, with the Bane links, you always kind of have a tool to turn links into more Bane links without needing more larva necessarily to create better units. It is scary though. It is a scary moment that we're at right now. 65 workers, 4 solar. It's a very high worker count. Baning speed not quite done yet. 1-1 one, one is on the way. 3rd CC is now being built here for Dream. As two more medevacs are rolling on over. Double tank gets dropped here. Infantry weapons level 1 finishes up. And combat shield as well. This is a well-timed out timing push. And I think solar might just be in a little bit of trouble without any type of baning speed. This is going to be so darn difficult to hold for him. Good tank fire. We'll target down a lot of these Bane links. These Marines continue marching back. And the next reinforcements come in already. What else do we have in production? We have a Liberator. More tanks. More Marines. And the wall will soon come down. And these reinforcements will start streaming across the map. Bane link speed about to finish up though. 12 seconds from now. The question will be. Uh, is there going to be any Bane links remaining? Well, none of these at least. This batch gets taken out. Solar calls GG before the centrifugal hooks finishes. And Dream takes map number one in this best of five and after that banger of a first game a hyper aggressive dream we immediately hop into the second game here on 2k atmospheres a map that's going to be a little bit harder to all in on of course glittering ashes doesn't tend to be the greatest map for terran but we've seen it in the past be uh be good for these type of tank all-ins whether that's from two base or even three base tank all-ins i've seen them happen before the question now is going to be, what is Dream planning on this map? He's a man of good preparation, uh, big diversity in his build orders as well. And his first depot is in a well, a position that we don't see it in very often. We'll still build the barracks at the ramp. Okay, I'm... Maybe he forgot to build a depot and he decided, you know what? It's better to build it ASAP than, than not to. I, it just is a little bit odd though. We'll have to wait and see exactly what this is going to be solar uh, opening up with a hatch first this time around after the failure of last game with that six ling opener out of the pool first decides that you know what this time it ain't going to be worth it and uh, doesn't want to make the same mistake twice you can turn on the music if there is any and spawning pool and extractor will go down after that initial hatchery of course so I was always looking around the map, making sure there's no weird proxy rexes here being built. I always love seeing that. Just making sure, you know. He's a safe player. Dark is a very different type of player since the first overlord across the map. It sends the second overlord over here because he doesn't need it. Doesn't give a crap. Dark is actually the coolest player that's alive. He's just doesn't play by the rules. You know, he's yeah. Does what he wants. Wants what he does. That's dark. Pool. About to finish in the main base as we have the command center on the way. I'm still not quite sure what this depot positioning is all about. It wouldn't surprise me if it's just a mistake. Sometimes it happens where you're, you forget to send your first SEV. It shouldn't happen in high level games. But, you know, sometimes it does. You're not completely focused. You know, your dog is barking. Your washing machine starts beeping because you're, you know, your, your laundry is done. Something like that. It happens to the best. I have a, a dishwasher that makes a lot of noise and sometimes I can hear it through my headphones phones, and it absolutely pisses me off. And the more you try to ignore it, the more you listen to it. And the moment you just start playing again, it will all be fine. But God, that thing makes a lot of noise. If you ever buy a dishwasher, make sure it doesn't make a weird beeping noise to tell you that it's done. It doesn't even stop by itself either. It just keeps going until you open it like an idiot. It's like, mate, after you've been beeping for an hour and a half, like, I get it. Why haven't they invented dishwashers yet to just open themselves after you know they're done washing you just like, you burst open the door and like a star Wars, and they're kind of like that 
That way you wouldn't need the beeping sound. Rather than investing in good speakers so I can hear it while I'm sleeping, make sure that I wake up, they could invest in just a door opening mechanism. I'm sure they've invented that already. It's really not that difficult. Well, for whatever reason, it's uh, it's not the case yet. And whenever I run the dishwasher at night, this bad boy makes a lot of noise. It's find a solution for it at some point. Maybe you should just destroy the speaker. Well, back to StarCraft 2 as we have uh, some solid openers here. What is this? Two orbital commands. Third base quickly on the way. No depots on the low ground. Of course not. And this seems to me that's going to be a Viking. I was going to say Banshee, but uh, the starboard is too far away from the barracks. So yeah, Viking lip. Could be just a single Viking into six cars, or could be Viking into Liberator into eight cars. There's a couple of options here that Dream has. We'll have to wait and see what his plan is going to be. And I personally wouldn't mind if he gets a Liberator behind this, but as we see, no continued Hellion production. This might just be a swap route. No, actually gets two more cars. No, I don't mind it. It's very rare to see major damage coming out of a triple command center opener against Zerg. Um, it's just not something we see anymore these days. Zergs have gotten too good at, uh, well, basically everything. Mainly defending and building queens. Splitting up the queens into two, three, five, eight groups. However many groups you can manage with your hotkeys. And, well, Sutter actually is using a single group here for the queens. But very often we see, like, two queens at the front and two queens over here. And then there's two queens in the wall somehow as well. And then you fly your lip in the main and there's five queens there. You count them all up together. It's 18. You watch the replay and there's only seven. It's like, hmm... Not quite sure how that ended up going, but it is really difficult against these top level Zergs. Like their queen movement, it feels like they have map hacks with the creep and with the overlords, and then their queen movement is just so perfect. It's funny because if you're the Zerg playing, it always feels like you're constantly being caught out of position and you're you're chasing ghosts. It's like it is freaking invisible, impossible to catch these aliens. Like right now, this is kind of a dead moment, but for whatever reason, Solar once again is in the correct spot. This was six cars, he leaves two cars at home as well. As, uh, ooh. Ooh. This is kind of cute. A very fast reactor here on the factory. That's going to allow for some of these mines to be built quickly as well. But like I said, no, no real damage being done. Did we get a, a bit of a worker cut here to get barracks 4 and 5 up faster? It feels like these barracks are quite quick. There's a bit of a supply block right now. That's not going to help for the, the overall army that uh, Dream is going to have. Takes out a couple of two mores, but I mean, the queens are nearby and they'll say, well, thanks for that, but we'll just poop a couple of two mores out again. And no problem, my friend. Third command center is uh, continuing to produce SCVs. This was this depot. Uh, this depot is gonna start a, a bit of a wall here. We could see a bunker in the wall. We see a lot of players build just a bunker at home. Try and keep those defenses tight. Other people just build depot walls. And that's also both is fine. I don't really care. Whatever you prefer more. Ooh. For a second, I thought he was going to all in pretty hard. Sometimes when uh, Terrans want to hit as hard as possible with one push, they decide to go into straight marine production from extra barracks. We often see that with eight racks openers. Rather than getting the reactors, which of course cost 36 seconds, um, they very often prefer getting... Uh, uh, getting just pure marines out of them. So, not quite what we're going to be seeing now, though. Hellions take this top watchtower as the main army, or well, the main move out, I should say, is uh, moving towards the bottom side. I did see Numitai Scarapace just finish up, but I had a unit step over for the past 35 minutes. Perhaps I could apply to become the GSL observer with this type of uh, <laughs> unit tab opening. Uh, combat shield not finishing up yet, and that pickup was correct here for dream dream without an armory that no he does have an armory he's just not starting his 2-2 yet he's getting a bunker at the third base like i mentioned this seems to be like kind of a, a characteristic thing there's a couple of players that really like doing that dream i know uh, what's he called spirit the player formerly known as soul really likes doing that bunker at the third base as well um, but yeah there's, there's also a lot of people that just prefer depot wells it's a lot of energy on these uh on these command centers, and that's of course the scan. You see Dream moving towards this top side, and he's actually setting up a pretty big attack. There's a bunch of Marines here chilling at the depot, but I do believe that these links will be able to just run by. Stim gets used. Uh oh, Dream's in a little bit of trouble. Solar coming in with that run by at the same time, we'll be able to clean up this push here at the top, and Dream in a 
dead. He's, he's not in a world of trouble. He is dead. He's going to lose so many depots here. I don't think he'll be able to kill this base. And even if he does, there's still a base on the right side that can be... Um, can just be taken this left side can be sacrificed but i don't think solar wants to and more importantly i don't think solar needs to the next few banelings are on the way there's nothing uh, that can splash that is remaining these queens will be able to deal with this practically by themselves the links and banelings will connect Ling run by still dealing a lot of damage though 52 workers right now left for dreams these links make their way back home solar survives with 77 workers 2-2 almost done. Is there an infestation pit? No, but it immediately starts. Extra gases could be on the way as well. And we see more links, more and more links coming out of solar. And I think he wants to pull the trigger here. He says, hey, you're, you're dead, my friend. You're dead. And all I need to do right now is finish you. So he's going to morph in 33 uh, aggressive bane links with this spot. It's going to hit like a 2-2 timing. I don't think solar wanted to kill his opponent with a 2-2 timing. That wasn't the intention at the start of this game, but... I think that is how it is going to end. Everything is on the other side of the map. There's nothing... Well, there's a couple. 20, 20 supplies at home. Three mines. With good mine shots, it is possible. But it's also extremely unlikely. This fight is going to be on creep. 2-2 finishes just now. And here comes Solar. Solar! Dream. No control whatsoever on these units. All of these mines will get taken out before they get to shoot. And the overs here will make sure that everything gets cleaned up. More Banings being morphed at home. GG gets called as Solar takes game number two and ties up the series. And just like that, the score is a one. And just like that, the score is one to one. And we're heading into our game number three here on Berlingrad. Oh, Berlingrad, you tasty map. You beautiful flower. Uh, small Terran map, Terran favorite map. Because it is that small, there's a couple of nasty tank locations as well. Pop, pop, pop. Brr, dish, boom. There's a lot of tasty tank locations here. We see Solar opening up with a uh, a spawning pool, which got started pretty quickly here. I think this was a 16 pool. So uh, it's just switching it up. And on a map this small, I don't really mind it. I don't. Links are going to make their way across the map pretty quickly. Dream is a player that scouts about 50% of the times. He proxy rexes about 20% of the times. And the other... Well, what's still left? 30% of the time he'll just do some random crap um, without scouting. So we'll, we'll see what he is going to decide for. Okay, it's going to be a scout. That's actually kind of big. Uh, as six links, if they are unscouted, probably have the potential to cancel a CC. I'm not sure if they can guarantee it, but there's definitely the potential. It is possible that they can at least deal a lot of damage. And with that Roach Warren follow-up, this scout all of a sudden become, became so, so important. Holy crap. Yeah, this, this SEV is, is, is not going to make it, obviously. At least it's not going to make it into the main base. Now the question is, will Dream play this safe? The correct response, or well, not the correct response, but the theory response is Marine Marine bunker this is the safe response and then once your bunker finishes you send your reaper across the map if it's not roaches you salvage the bunker and terran is slightly ahead however if your opponent doesn't build the roaches and you don't build a bunker terran all of a sudden is a lot more ahead so it's a better situation for the terran player another thing that terran can do is try and get that sev across the map to see if the roaches are moving out i believe it's usually at 240 245 is about the timing where you want to be spotting yeah okay it's 2 240 Ooh, I, he went straight for a base and these roaches are gonna get spotted now he still has time to make a reactionary bunker oh he's already getting the bunker on the high ground very nice very very nice tech lab starting straight away as well this is going to be a triple roach no what is it a five roach play single ravager on the way continued gas mining this is this is a big investment here out of solar the third base is going to be extremely delayed continued gas mining means that the ravagers will join in uh, there's already one ravager but a second ravager will come soon as well most likely oh this is this is going to be real nasty, but that bunker is done already. And with the Cyclones, this is this is textbook response here. This really is. Overlord is a little bit late as well. The second Ravager is now on the way. As Solar tries to take out the Devo. Solar's not going to get anything here. Solar is going to get nine. He's he's done for. 
Overlord was too late as well. And now the Cyclone's going to be out. Medivac's on the way, so there's counter-attack potential. Good control on those SCVs as well, keeping most of them alive and keeping the depot alive. One SCV will fall right now. Here comes the Cyclone, starts targeting down that Overlord immediately. The moment that Overlord dies, there's no more high ground vision. Boom! Uh, goes the Overlord, and at the same time the depot goes down. Both players losing a thing that gives them supply. One is a flying, uh, well, piñata practically, and the other one is a, is a supply depot. Yes. A couple of these roads are gonna fall though. This is scary counter attack. There's no speed. I mean, unless Dream is extremely slow in the head, he's not going to get hit by these biles either. Doesn't get that roach though, and this control out of solar is quite good. I think that a boost on this medevac, yeah. He should have I think he should have boosted faster and tried to pick up a unit to try and chase quicker. He will get another roach, I think. Keeps a lot of these marines alive as well. I still think that Solar is in a lot of trouble here. He really has nothing whatsoever. 33 against 33 workers. Um, speed halfway done. Cloak is on the way already. Uh, Cyclone's gonna get repaired. The SEV, the scouting SEV, the absolute MVP of this game. Oh, I don't like that lock on, on these uh, on these overlords though. That was a mistake. Should be going for the roaches. Yeah, that oh, that was that was really sloppy here. That actually was kind of sloppy out of dream. I think this had a lot of potential. He also was floating an absolute crap ton of money during all of this, and I understand that because this is a micro intensive army. All right, I'm not gonna yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna flame him for that, but. <sighs> I think there was some miscontrol going on there. I really do believe he could have done more. Now, Solar immediately follows this up with a Roach Ravager Ling attack, but Banshee is the follow-up. We have an eBay Bunker Depot wall here already. These Links will not be capable of getting in. I, I mean, once these Ravagers go down, there's no way to break this wall. There's just absolutely no way. Double Cyclone is here as well. I do believe that Dream should target down that extremely low Ravager here. We'll get it before it gets a bile down. Yeah, Double Cyclone. This is absolutely over. Solar has no chance in this game. 20 more links in on the way. Um, we'll be able to break through. But I mean, you're never shoot, gonna shoot the Banshee out of the sky unless you hit three Biles on it. And that sounds borderline impossible. Bunker's going to finish up as well. The Cyclones stay alive. And I mean, that's just absolutely it. GG gets called. Dream wins game number three and puts himself match point. Yes, yes. Game number four here on Hardwire. Where we'll have to see what Solar has prepared for this map. Hardwire is the map that honestly is slightly their favorite, but not by that much. It's really not brilliant for Terran. Sometimes when you listen to Terran's talk, you really start believing their propaganda, but do not fall for the lies of the, the Terran propaganda machine. Hardwire is good for Zerg, but it's not super Zerg favorite, especially later on in the game once you get these split map scenarios. I've seen many a good Zerg fall on this map, and I'm sure I will see many a good Zerg fall in the future. Hatch first. So far it's been an alternating pattern out of Solar. Uh, pool first, hatch first, pool first, hatch first. Funnily enough, he won the game with the hatch first, and he lost both games with the pool first. So maybe he'll wisen up and uh, keep playing hatch first. Of course, that's not really how it works, but you know, if I see a pattern, I... Uh, <laughs> I like to pretend that it means something. <laughs> so, here we go. Losing all the pool first into... Ooh. Yeah, Dream. Big diversity guy. Huge on the diverse build orders. I love it. It's a, it's a pleasure watching him because of that, honestly. It gets really boring watching the same crap again and again and again. But this guy, he... Uh, I, 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 I love Clem, but... When he was winning every single game and playing triple CC Banshee, like, 95% of the time... It, it was fun to see someone dominate, but I do like seeing a hell battle in every now and again and a proxy wreck, you know? It's like, and the worst part was that Clem would always win as well, so it was kind of predictable what would happen when he would play. He'd just show up with the cars, do what felt like nothing, then the Banshees would get 8 kills, Zerg would still be up 25 supply, then Clem moved across with the first two medevacs, snipe all 5 banelings, do a 360 kickflip, and boom, just like that. Is up 45 supply, 3-3 three, three is done, and has 12 bases. Like, it, it did get old pretty quick. Now, what Dream is doing here is a Marine into Factory. This is a very cool build, and this is what Beyond played for the longest time. For the longest time, Beyond literally only played Marine first into Factory, 
and then had 17 different follow-ups with this. He had mind drops, he had triple hellions, he had um, like what well, single hellion into uh, factory hellion, like five hell, five five hellion hellbat push, that type of stuff. There were builds that went into BC. I've seen them all, and this looks like a swap to me, as neither of these is producing. No, it's not going to be a swap. So more marines on the way here. It's just a single hellion. It's going to be a second hellion. Okay. Looks to me like there's going to be triple heli. And I think we saw Maru play something along those lines with a marine drop with hellions into battle cruiser. I know that Dream is a guy that doesn't mind playing BCs and mech. I've seen him play mech before. He's a tricky player. He really, he really can play a lot of different styles. It's impressive to watch. It's a very good theory uh, on, on basically everything. It's him. Impressed to see. Yeah, it's going to be Battle Cruiser. Okay. Yeah, this is the the build that Maru played in Intel Extreme Masters. I want to say against Rainer twice, maybe? I think he won one game with it as well. Um, he might have pulled it out against Serral as well, that Intel Extreme Masters got the lead set. I, I can't quite remember. But very similar openers here. Yeah, I and mean, then you swap into this. I do believe that Maru at some point also got a got some Hellbats with it, with an armory at some point, but I'm not quite sure how that's supposed to work. Now, Solar himself is opting for a Roach Warren. We'll throw out 8-9 uh, Roaches. And if he can successfully deal with this Marine Drop without revealing the fact that he has Roaches, Dream is in the world of trouble. And he really is going to be in a world of trouble, honestly. There's nothing here showing that what's happening is, is weird. I guess the only thing that, that Dream right now could tell Dream that something is off is that it's only two queens. There should be like three or four queens pushing this back, you know? But maybe you just believe Solar is an idiot. It's like, oh, so little queens. What a clown. Yeah, it's going to be mech here. Four gases before the extra barracks. This is 100% mech. Battle cruisers are great against roaches. Um, the problem with the battle cruiser is that it won't be out before the roaches hit. Hellions spot the roaches marching across the map. I'm not so sure if Dream actually saw that. I don't think he did. He's not really building anything. This SCV is going to get taken out now. The Hellions start moving back. Lynx will deal with these marines. As, uh, I mean, Solar is just here and he's knocking, knock, knock, knocking on Terran's door. There's nothing Terran can do. Double Ravager taking out these depots that will supply block Dream. He should really try to cancel this command center. That was a big error out of Solar. Um, letting that finish is just kind of dumb. I, it's a mistake, at least. Battlecruiser is going to pop. I still think it will be fine for Solar, but he's making it a bit harder for himself because with a third CC, you can lose a lot more workers all of a sudden here. And that Battlecruiser eventually will clear everything. Uh, ten workers have fallen already, and there's still so many units. Yeah, there's just nothing remaining. This is this is still absolutely over, honestly. Like, if you survive with with 30, 32 workers, I'd say okay, this is this is playable. But if you're gonna survive with what seems to me like it's going to be 10, 12 workers, and uh, the question is just going to be how many production structures will be left. Yeah, it's an issue. And I, I think at, at this point, Dream knows as well. There's really nothing he can do. He's going to lose every single last SEV. The BC just doesn't have enough damage output. Four spores are on the way already. Second BC will come out. And I guess Dream will try to push across the map with it. Now GG gets called as Solar. Wins game number four. And we'll be going to the rubber match. The final game in this best of five. Which has been surprisingly short so far. Nice little Rochal in there out of Solar, ensuring that he keeps his chances in this best of five alive. Now the question is, will he stick with the pattern? Will we see a pool first out of him? And what is the plan here for Dream? All SEVs stay at home. I'm actually kind of curious now. I feel invested into this. I really do. Come on. Ooh, ooh, it's gonna be pool first. Or 17 hatch? No, it's gonna be 70 pool. It's not sending anything down. He's actually going to do it. Oh, gas pool. So another roach rush? I, 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 I guess. And Dream opens up with a CC first here. Same opener as in game number one. Same openers as in game number one. I can't recall if Solar did that with a gas in game number one as well, though. I'm not so sure if he did. Um, but it, it is it is interesting to to think about. 
that we kind of have these repeat build orders. Will he open up with six links? No, it's going to be less links. It's going to be four links maximum here. Just looking at the, the larva count. I don't think six links are going to be possible. Another larva should pop soon. They'll allow four of these bad boys to pop. Um, double gas. I don't think usually as a Terran you scout with CC first though. I don't think you do. Uh, is The question is, will there be a Roach Warren as a follow-up? Like, what are we going to see? I I just don't know. I really just don't know that well. I do think that if you'd get a Roach Warren, you'd probably get it before you start your Overlord. So this is just going to be quick speed. The one time that the Roach then actually probably would have worked is the time where Solar decides not to do it. And that's kind of painful. Reaper gets built here. And uh, the factory once again will follow up in the wall. Immediately we see Solar just... I mean, he scouted at this point. He's going to march across the map, try to, to kill an SCV or something. Do at least... Just do anything. Oh, he might try to hide these links even more. I really like that. Now, this I really like. Ooh, this is a cute move. He says, hey, I know what you did last time. Last time you had that Reaper upstairs. You had the full wall. You probably have another full wall upstairs. I ain't going to fall for it, buddy. I know... I know what you did last summer. Or, well, I know what you did on... What was it? Glittering Ashes? I know what you did there. I'm not going to be falling for it. Um, instead, I'm going to keep these here. And the moment you move out with the Reaper, and the Reaper arrives at my base without your SCV scout, by the way, I'm just going to go in with the links. But Dream's also a smart fella and says, hey, I'm never going to show you my Reaper ever. I'm just going to keep it at home until the first Hellions come out. This is interesting. This feels extremely unsafe against any type of Rochal in here. Comes the metabolic boost, will spot this. Oh my god. Did Dream just miss that? I think he did just miss that. Did he just attack the cleaning bot? What did a cleaning bot ever do to you, Solar? Metabolic boost will finish up. And uh, now he probably wished that he hadn't attacked the cleaning bot. So that guy is going to be cleaning up his remains. Might do a little wee on these circling bones as well. Well, he's at it. He can do more than just cleaning, my friends. Three workers go down. That's more than four links ever should get. Um, so... Given the situation, I guess this is the best that Solar could have hoped for. Same response, or yeah, same follow-up here that we saw in game number one, by the way. Um, so it's that three racks with these, this weird Hellion count into what's going to be a, well, some type of 3-1-1 drop into a tank all in, I guess. Now you do have this high ground, which is so extremely strong on this map. We've seen it being abused by Terrans before, and it will get abused again in the future as well. Double Hellion plus the Reaper. Bzzz, start flaming these queens. And well, this looks... Uh, this looks kind of promising here. It really does. Because this time Solar is really not aware of it. Last time he scouted it with an, uh, with an Overlord. This time he's kind of unaware, honestly. I was trying to get in with the Ling, but will not get in. We'll see that there's a couple of Marines. And I mean, it is the same exact setup. As that game number one. Does Solar have the memory of a goldfish? Or does he have a good memory? Does he remember what happened in that first game? He isn't buying it. He's building spores. He says, hey, there's no way you do the same thing twice. I know you have many different build orders. And I know that you would not uh, repeat. This is a fake marine drop. Saying, hey, I'm not getting stim. Because it's such a weird amount of marines. This is like, hey... You're probably just building from one barracks, right? Otherwise, this would be eight marines. Like, six marines? Who dropped six marines? Six overlords? Who built six overlords at the same time? Holy crap, Solar. Uh, a little bit sloppy there in the macro. It's, well, it's not going to be supply block for a long time, so that's nice. But it's uh, it, it's not how it's supposed to be done. It, it's, it's not how it's supposed to be. It's going to cut a little bit in the screen count if you have this many overlords, usually. Because there's a lot of minerals. Spire! Oh, he has no clue what's kicking off here, does he? He's gonna get six gas. Oh, he believes this is three. Yeah, I mean, fair play. He believes it's triple CC. It's almost always triple CC, but not this time. He's gonna get banelings before baneling speed. You need baneling speed so bad, Solar. You just don't know it yet. He's gonna get a fort base as well, most likely. He's just in a world of trouble. He, he could just die against the next two medevacs. This first medevac is, is just faking him. It's just it's like, oh, well, uh, I have a couple of Banes, and that should do the trick, right? I mean, now double double tank in a medevac is popping across the map. 
I just don't see a way for Solar to hold this. I just don't see it. Lola Link's arm production centrifugal hook starting now. Spire needs to be cancelled. I mean, what are you going to get? Two Muralisks? No, it needs to go, man. It needs to go. We need more queens. We need... This side, this base, wouldn't even be a bad investment right now. That way you can give up this base without feeling terrible about it. But this angle, this angle, look at this. Look at this position. Look at what Solar sees. He can never get up there. It's just impossible. Not with a flank, not with anything. So tank on the right side, shelling that, you know, anything that comes by from uh, from the east. I, th this is just going to be so hard. The Marines are pretty low, though. Target fire on the Bailings is perfect. Is it, that's it. That is absolutely it. Combat Shield is going to finish up. Infantry Weapons Level 1 also close to finishing. And an even harder win than in game number 1. Dream takes it home. And with that game, takes the series 3-2. It was a cheese-filled game. It was a, a series. It was a it was a short series for a best of five. I don't think we had a single game longer than ten minutes. Dream will uh, will take it home. Congrats to him. Sad for Solar. It is what it is. Lost all three games by the way with Pool first and won both the games where he played Hatch first. Just you know, I'm a man of patterns. Just want to make sure that, that everyone's aware. All right. That's going to be it for me today. Thanks all so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Thank you, and bye-bye.